Hello everyone, welcome back to Nurses, the heart of healthcare. Keep learning, keep growing. My name is Shanaz and in this video we are going to discuss the primary component in influencing survival from cardiopulmonary arrest that is high quality CPR. So let's all of us clearly understand what is high quality CPR, what is its importance and what are the components of high quality CPR. As healthcare professionals, we should know, we should understand and we should be competent enough to provide high quality CPR to a victim with cardiopulmonary arrest to save life. So let's begin. But before moving ahead, a small reminder to all my wonderful viewers that if you are new to my channel, please subscribe my channel and if you find the content helpful, please do like and share my videos. Let's begin. As we all know that the, uh, when a person is in cardiopulmonary arrest, okay, cardiac arrest, the heart stops beating and uh, Within four to six minutes after cardiac arrest, the cells begins to die. So it's very crucial that CPR is performed immediately and with as much diligence as possible. CPR is the first line response that can save life. It is an emergency life saving procedure. So when you find a person unresponsive, there's no pulse, the person is not breathing or gasping, immediately without wasting even a single minute, we need to start with CPR, okay, to save the vital organs like heart and brain. These two masterpieces, if we are able to save and prevent them from irreversible damage, we can turn the situation around. Okay, so that's the reason high CPR should be provided immediately and it should be of high quality to be effective. So what is high quality CPR? High quality CPR is nothing but chest compressions that are of sufficient depth and performed at a fast enough rate to generate enough blood flow to the brain and other vital organs to delay cell death. Cells begins to die within four to six minutes. So CPR should be begin immediately and it should be given properly with high quality. Okay. So what is the importance of high quality CPR? According to American Heart Association, high quality CPR is one of the most important factor to improve the chance of survival from cardiac arrest. Performing high quality CPR improves the chances of survival and neurological outcome. High quality CPR is the foundation of resuscitation for cardiac arrest victims as it maintains blood flow to the vital organs, especially the heart and the brain. So that's the reason we have to provide high quality CPR. Both American Heart Association and European Resuscitation Council in their 2020 guidelines identified five critical components that are required for providing high quality CPR. So let's discuss one of I mean all of them one by one. The first component is adequate compression depth. Okay, I repeat adequate compression depth. That means we need to push hard. Push hard adequately compressing to a depth of 2 to 2.4 inches or 5 to 6 centimeters in case of adults. And in case of infants 1.5 inches or 4 centimeters. That is one third of the AP dimension of the chest in infants and children. Okay, so this depth must be achieved. And to achieve this depth, we have to place our hands properly on the chest, on the victim's chest. And how we are going to place it? We have to place our hand in the center of the chest, between the nipples, on the lower half of the sternum. And our shoulders should be vertically above the victim's chest, just like this. Our shoulders should be vertically above the victim's chest. Our arms should be straight, elbows locked and we have to push heart to a depth of 2 to 2.4 inches. What is the importance of achieving adequate compression depth? Many people underestimate the force it takes to administer correct compression depth because they are afraid of harming the victim. They are afraid of breaking the victim's ribs. And with this fear, they provide shallow compressions. But shallow chest compressions are, you know, not enough to effectively pump blood to the victim's dying organs. See, when we are giving CPR, there are chances that, you know, the victim's ribs may break. One or two ribs. Okay, it may break. I know it's not good. But don't you think that it's a small price to pay for a life saved? I myself, when I was giving CPR in an ICU once to a patient with cardiac arrest, he was a very thin built, uh, you know, elderly person. And when I was giving CPR, 
we heard the sound of ribs breaking and the intensivist says it's okay please continue because it's a small price to pay for life being saved okay that can be corrected afterwards the first thing is the life has to be saved so don't be afraid of breaking the uh, victims it doesn't mean that willingly we have to break it but we need to achieve this depth 2 to 2.4 inches because too shallow the purpose is not met fine so this is the first component the second component uh, yeah okay and one more thing is uh, for adults we know that we use two hands for children we use one hand technique and for infants we use two fingers technique or encircling technique okay for compressions the next component is adequate compression rate okay compression should be given at the rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute okay so this has to be met and for this we have to what we say uh push fast okay so we have to push hard and push fast fast at the rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute if the compressions are too slow then blood is not being circulated effectively around the body if the compressions are too fast then the heart uh, you know will not be able to uh, fill with blood completely and that will uh, decrease the cardiac output that drops the cardiac output so that's the reason it should be maintained at a rate of 100 to 120 compressions per minute so depth and rate both are very important component of high quality cpr the third component of high quality cpr is allow the chest to recoil completely between the compressions okay so between the compressions we have to allow the chest to recoil completely because this will allow the heart to refill with the blood completely which improves the cardiac output if we are giving compressions too fast then the heart will not be able to refill with the blood completely and this will in turn decrease the cardiac output and the purpose of giving compressions will not be met so that's the reason allow the chest to recoil completely between the compressions the fourth component is minimize interruptions during cpr as much as possible we should try our level best to minimize interruptions during the compressions okay it is very important component because the success of cpr depends upon you know the continuity again each time the cpr is stopped the output of the heart falls off dramatically and after the cpr is restarted it takes time to build up that cardiac output again so that's the reason we should minimize interruptions even when the other person is placing the uh, paddles on the chest or putting an iv cannula or whatever the other procedure simultaneously going on we need we should not stop the compressions okay compression should be continued except while giving the shock after the shock immediately again we have to start with the cpr with compressions okay so if uh, airway patency can be maintained with opa or npa then advanced airway adjuncts can be delayed for some time and compression should not be interrupted so this is again very important component for a successful cpr the fifth component of high quality cpr is avoid overventilating or hyperventilating the patient okay because this can be detrimental to their outcome excessive ventilation rate significantly decreases the coronary perfusion pressure and the survival rate excessive breathing what happens is when we give excessive ventilation it increases the intrathoracic pressure which reduces the coronary perfusion because the blood can't flow back into the heart and this will decrease the blood return to the heart and reduce blood return to the heart means reduce outflow from the heart so that's the reason hyperventilating or overventilating the patient can cause can induce hypotension okay which will decrease cardiac output so that's the reason we should not overventilate or hyperventilate the patient each uh, cycle of cpr consists of 30 compressions followed by two rescue breaths and this should be maintained as it is in each cycle okay that is in uh, two rescuers if there is one rescuer or two rescuers then you will give 50 15 is to two fine so hyperventilating should be avoided so these are the five important components of high quality cpr one is adequate compression 
depth adequate compression rate and uh, allow it, uh, chest to adequately recoil between the compressions minimize interruption between the compressions and avoid over ventilating or hyper ventilating the patient okay so by providing high quality cpr effectively we will be able to save the life of a patient so we should be competent enough to provide high quality cpr so that we can save a life and make a difference in their neurological outcome so thank you so much for watching if you find the content helpful please do like and share my videos and subscribe my channel thank you so much uh, a true healthcare professional is always a lifelong learner so keep learning keep growing knowledge related to medicine is a blessing so please share it and uh, it is meant for enlightening self and others thank you so much keep smiling take care of your health and be strong and keep learning thank you